Would you like to know how to write better university essays? Of course you would. So stick around, I'm going to show you how. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. I'm Mark Jago. I'm doing a series of videos on how to improve your university essays. If you're finding these tips on essay writing helpful, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get all the updates. OK, so I've pretty much been talking about how to put together a good, detailed essay plan. If you sent me this sheet of paper here, I would know exactly what you're going to do in your essay. I can pretty much see what the essay is going to be. All that's missing is what are the actual arguments and how are you going to evaluate them? If you then take this essay plan and write the actual essay based on it, it's actually pretty easy because you just take each bullet point in turn and write like a paragraph, 100 words or whatever, based on it, just doing exactly what that bullet point asks you to do. OK, so here I just write a paragraph evaluating premise one of this argument. Here I just write a paragraph saying whether this argument has a logically valid form or not. That's all I need to do for each bullet point. So by keeping each bullet point separate, A, you keep the essay really readable. It's really easy to follow. It's really well structured. And B, it makes it easy for you to write it because you only have one thing to do at each point. Let's just take a look at how that would actually work in practice. So here I've got one section from my plan. Let's just make it general. In this section, I'm going to evaluate X's argument. X can be absolutely anyone. I'm going to write 600 words on it. So I'm going to do that by following each of these bullet points. I'm going to write one paragraph for each one. So for each premise, I'm going to evaluate that premise and then new paragraph. I'm going to do the next one and then new paragraph. I'm going to evaluate the argument's logic. And then a little bit at the end in which I say, so what? What is my interim conclusion? What have we learned from this? But brief. It's a really good idea to keep this formula of one paragraph per bullet point. And when you do that, you should try to make it really clear what each paragraph is about. Also, try to make it really clear when you are moving on to a new point. So if it's one point per paragraph, that'll be kind of simple. But sometimes you need to kind of, if it's a really big point, maybe you'll spend a few paragraphs. So you need a bit of signposting there. You need to basically be saying, OK, I've discussed this point and I'm now moving on to the next point. But you kind of don't want to say that. You know, you sound a bit like a robot if you keep saying, ah, now we have finished this point. Now we are moving on to the next point. So there are ways to do that. So I've got a paragraph on premise one. I say premise one states that blah, blah, blah. It's supported by. So I'm giving the reasons why you might believe premise one, blah, 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 blah. And I'm finishing up with, OK, so we're going to accept premise one. So that sums up that paragraph nicely. On to the next one. We're talking about premise two. OK, same kind of stuff. But in this case, maybe I'm arguing against the premise. So we're talking about a counterexample. Summing it up, so premise two shouldn't be accepted. And then we're moving on to something about the argument being valid or not valid. And at the end here, I've just got this extra little bit. We have seen, OK, so that's my signal that I'm saying I'm summing up this little section. The argument is invalid. Premise two isn't true. So I'm just summing up all of the above paragraphs. So there, I didn't go in for kind of saying, and now I am talking about premise number two. Now I've finished talking about premise number two. But I did signal that. So let's just see how I did that. So basically, the first words of paragraph one are premise one. And the last line says, OK, we're going to concede premise one. Next bit, new paragraph. The first words are premise two. So it signals that we have finished doing premise one and we are now talking about premise two. OK, little conclusion there. Premise two shouldn't be accepted. That signals that we have finished talking about premise two. And then, well, it's not the first words in the next paragraph, but it is there in the first sentence. The conclusion would not follow. So there I'm signaling that I'm talking about the logical form of the argument. I could say something like, let's now think about the logical form of the argument. I thought that was kind of obvious. I didn't feel the need to do that, but you could do that. OK, 
And I finished up that paragraph by saying the conclusion does not follow. So I'm making it clear this finishes my evaluation of the logical form of the argument. I didn't have to say that explicitly. I think the way I've put that conveys that. And then because I want to stop doing my evaluation and just basically tell you, so what? What do I take from that evaluation? I'm going to say something like, in summary, OK, that's my signal to you that we have stopped evaluating. And now I'm just going to tell you, so what? And then we're moving on. OK, Mark, isn't this a really formulaic way of writing essays? We kind of, you know, have this set formula of introduction in this essay. I will conclusion in this essay. I have argued that and we have this kind of premise one premise. Yes, it is formulaic. Does it make the most interesting essays in the world? Of course it does doesn't. But look, you're not trying to write the world's most interesting essays. You're not doing journalism here. You're not writing a novel. You're trying to write good university essays. I think this is particularly important in an analytic subject like philosophy, but I think a lot of this goes right across the board. If you go and dig out your universities, your department's marking schemes for essays, have a look at what gets you the marks. You'll typically see things like originality, structure, clarity of writing, knowledge of technical terms, uh, you know, understanding of the material, that kind of stuff. There's usually nothing in there about, you know, is this a great work of art? Is this really nice literature? Is it fun to read? Are there any jokes there? So I'm definitely not encouraging you to write badly. I don't want you ultimately to write in a mechanical way. This is kind of something of a learning curve. So first of all, I want you to take on board this kind of slightly mechanical formulaic way of putting an essay together until you've internalized it and got what a good essay structure, what a clear flowing structure feels like. Once you've done that, then you can start dicking around with, you know, the way in which you express yourself and trying to make it a bit less formulaic, a bit more fun. Mostly that is for your own satisfaction, OK? I really try and put that stuff into the papers that I write. I think I like that for my own sense of achievement. And hopefully the three people worldwide who read what I've written uh, get some enjoyment out of it, or at least they don't hate the time they put into reading it. But, you know, your essays are assessments. So what you want to do here is demonstrate your skills, your philosophical or theological or whatever skills. OK, so if we keep those points in mind, I think you're going to see your essays improving. So if you found this advice useful, helpful, why not subscribe to the channel? Because there's more of it coming. Hit the bell icon to get updates. So in the next video, I'm going to focus on principles of good writing, clarity and conciseness. So I hope you join me back for that. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.